Hi, I'm Josh Merwin. I'm the founder of the Houston International Sports Film Festival. We're here at O Athletic with Marlene, and she's going to tell us a little about her career and life. <laughs> um, it's hard to kind of just say that, but I guess people know me as the first female to ever qualify for the Olympic Games, uh, first woman to medal, got a bronze. And then now I'm a professional boxer, uh, first female ever signed to Golden Boy Promotions, which is one of the top four promotional companies in b boxing. So. Cool. Um, yeah, so one of the things we're focusing on the film festival is stories that really tell us about life and sports, how sports relates to life. Um, so it's less highlights and more somebody's life story, what they kind of overcame in order to, to achieve their goals and dreams, um, and also also using sports as a way to, to get through life. So kind of where did you grow up? Tell us your kind of story from a youngster. Were you always boxing or what was, how did um, this come to be? Yeah, so I mean I've been boxing for 20 years now. Um, and as everybody knows, boxing isn't really, is an extremely male-dominated sport. Uh, before this whole movement, it was more associated kind of like football. There's not really women don't exist in that area. So when I started boxing, it wasn't the easiest or people didn't agree with me very much. And it became a thing that I've been doing now for 20 years. So we're barely now starting to really break those barriers down, get it on TV. Um, they're really starting to see more of women's boxing now yeah. and um, that was really a transition that I feel like was made in 2012 when we were allowed in the Olympic Games but I had been boxing you know for about 15 13 years before that so it was it was a transition it was it was it was different but I was raised you know in a, um, a Latin household my both my parents are from Mexico I'm first generation and I was raised around it, so thought it was a good idea to try. <laughs> it was, you say you were raised around it. How, did your parents box? Did you have siblings? Do you have siblings? That um, no, so basically the culture is very like, um, when it comes to sports, it's really soccer and boxing. Yeah. It's really mm -hmm. what we watch. It's not baseball, it's not football um, or American football. It's soccer and boxing. So when my dad would always be watching one or the other, yeah. it was the boxing that I was just more driven to. Yeah. And I didn't realize when I was younger that it was only men that I was watching. So then I didn't realize that there was even a whole gender discrepancy. I just thought, okay, well, it's watch what I see, and yeah, and let me go box. So it was, it was a, it was different. And then my dad was extremely Latin, so he didn't believe in women doing anything like that. Okay. He was very, in the past, very women need to learn how to cook and clean, and they need to, you know, be driven by family and everything of that nature so the progress took time but now it's you know it's a whole different world that I'm living in yeah I mean I guess you know what how old are you when you first did you take a boxing class a lesson or did you had it had like what was that like? um did you have to convince your dad to be able to do it I assume yeah I did I was about 10 years old and what happened was my dad I had an older brother a late brother and a younger brother um and my dad wanted both of them to box so he kept taking them to the gym, taking them to the gym, taking them to the gym. And then my older brother had said, you know what, that's it. I don't want to box anymore. And it's not for me. It's not something I want to do. And my dad still needed someone to take my little brother because he was only about eight years old. So I told my dad, I was like, if I'll, I'll go and I'll watch him. Like, we'll go together yeah. if I'm allowed to box. <laughs> so it was like a babysitting job <laughs> slash boxer. So about three, four months good, in. Good negotiations. Yeah, it was, as a kid, even as a kid, a little yeah. blackmail. I'll give you this, I'll do that. Yeah, a little manipulation yeah. goes a long way. Um, so I asked him and he said, yeah. And uh, about three, four months later, my little brother said he didn't want to go anymore. And my dad really couldn't keep me from going because yeah. he had already approved. So that's really how I got into the gym. And I had the same trainer that I had uh, when I first started boxing. The first day I met, the same guy I met. He trained me for about 10 years, oh, wow. 10 to you know 12 years, which is actually how I met my trainer now. Uh, because we came to the O, and the time, because I have a son, things changed schedule-wise, and I just felt like the trainer I have now was a way better fit for me, for the professional level. Cool. And you, so you grew up in Houston? Mm-hmm. Cool. I grew up in, I was born and raised in Houston. I left for about five years to California, again, just for career-wise, coaching, trying to figure out in what In L.A. or where? I was in... Uh, San Diego, and then okay. I was in San Francisco. Cool. And nice. then I came back to Houston. Cool. So how old's your son? He's two. Two. Okay. Yeah, he's two. So I took a year off of boxing to have him, and then I literally jumped back in. I had him January 7th, and then I fought April 7th. Oh, 
a while. Or January third, and I fought April seventh. That's, that's a quick turnaround. Yeah, it was it was quick. I boxed the entire pregnancy, so I didn't lose a lot of timing. And then as soon as I had him, I just got back into the gym, and it was a pretty quick turnaround. Yeah. By boxing, you mean training, or you weren't in fights? No, no, I wasn't in fights. Yeah, it was just training, just training. I wasn't getting hit. Actually, I did spar a few times. I did spar a few times, but they weren't allowed to hit. Obviously, only right. hit in the face. So I, I went like with one time they're like, oh yeah, just hit me in the face. Yeah, no, just else, please just hit me in the face. face. And they were okay with it. So I had to, I had to go with more experienced people so yeah. they could control yeah, themselves. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I didn't box. It was just training. Cool. Um, what gym did you grow up boxing in? Um, I would actually jump around from gym. Yeah. So my first trainer, which like I said, so how I met um, the trainer that I have now, he would jump around from gym to gym, which is why we ended up in the O, okay. because he was jumping around. What are your trainer's names? What was your first um, one of them? My first trainer was named Rudy Silva, and then my okay. second trainer is named James Cooper. Okay. So he's um, he worked here at the O. Cool. This, this place is amazing. Um, it's like you never know it from the outside. Yeah, I know. It's here. It's just, and it's just kind of hidden, so you yeah. don't realize that it's super big, but it's a, it's a, it's a definitely a nice gym. So I guess what is like living in Houston and bringing, I mean, a, a metal back to, to the city and you know, how does that mean for you? Like, how, how tired are you to the community? Um, no, I'm, ex I'm extremely close to the community, especially because I was born and raised here. So, you know, Houston really saw me grow. It was like, okay, I would be in like the Chronicle and then I'd have like little interviews here and there. And then it was like, okay, now you have endorsement deals and now you're on national television. And then they put me on billboards. And then yeah. it's like, I left, when I left the Olympics, it was like, man, she's, she's like really good. And then when I came back, it was like, oh wow. Everybody who didn't know me, as far as if you're if you're a Houstonian, yeah. you know me now. Um, but everybody knows that I'm local, and you know I was born and raised here. So I would say anything that happens, especially in the Latin community um, in Houston, I usually have a lot to do with it, and um, I'm I'm really really close knit to the cool. Houstonians. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that leads to the next question. So I'm starting this sports film festival. Um, I'm from Houston, born and raised here too. I was living in New York for the past 14 years. Um, and partially because of the film festival, partially because of the pandemic, decided to move back to Houston. But really wanted to, when I started thinking about a film festival that involves sports, it's like what city would it be really good in? And I thought of Houston because I'm from here. And also, I mean, it's something that it can be a really big event here, whereas in other cities it can kind of get lost. Um, and there's a ton of Houston athletes that are born and raised here and then also that, that come here professionally afterwards. Yeah, we have, um, a, we have like a lot of elite <laughs> um, I do that again. It's fine. Um, we have a lot of elite athletes um, that are here, and then plus you have the Astros and the Dynamos, and you have like a lot of huge teams. Yeah. The Texas, you have a lot of huge, huge teams that are you know e extremely popular when it just comes to nationwide, worldwide, and then you have you know a lot of um, extremely like elite athletes that come out of Houston. So it's like, man, how many? How can the, such a, a city like? produce yeah. so many great people and I think that's one of the major reasons why it's like oh you're from Houston when I was younger I didn't think that Houston was such a major city but it's became you know it, it's became massive so I would I would agree it was it's yeah. a good sports it's a good sports city <laughs> uh, yeah for sure um, one of this passionate fan base and you know especially with all the colleges around around Texas um, passionate fan base for that too um, and one of the things we want to do is have sports activities for kids and especially for underprivileged kids that don't have access to, to big gyms to, to give them access. So I guess what, you know, what are, what's something we could do as a film festival that can involve the Latin community or particularly maybe boxing, you know, during the festival because we'll have films, but we'll also have activities as well. Yeah, no, I think maybe even just getting, getting uh, someone who knows what they're doing and just putting on like a clinic, a small clinic yeah. or just any, you know, obviously free to get people aware and knowing more about a certain sport. Like boxing, people don't really know too much about it. You see it from the outside, you know, famous fighters, but it's not something that people usually, especially kids, go yeah. to every day. You know, it's not like baseball. It's not like a little league. So I think to be, just even allow a small clinic or something to let people become more aware would be something that would be cool. Just to introduce the idea into people's minds or people's lives that wouldn't have access. Yeah, cool. Um, so, I mean, the, the first female boxer that I know that came to my head was Layla Ali. Obviously, we're sitting behind <laughs> the poster of Muhammad right. Ali. Um, you know, was that somebody that you, was she one of the first female boxers that you saw growing up? Yeah, she definitely was. It was it was um there was a group of women that were with Layla. It was Lucia Riker, Layla Lee, Christy Martin, and Ann Wood. 
and that was the only women that existed. Four. That's it. That's it. I'd never, there was a lot more, but those were the only people that made it to the surface. Yeah. And it was the only time that I had heard names or seen anybody that was not male yeah. growing up. And then it just vanished. And then it was gone. And I never saw anything about it until me. Until you, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, with social media now, I mean, athletes have more of a voice, and especially over the past six months, people, are, more athletes are using their voice for positive and taking a stand. You know, I mean, I guess, what are your thoughts about um, how athletes can use their voice? And, you know, what are the, is there anything that you're involved in, any charities or anything that you're involved in that you want to kind of spread the word about as well? You know, I think more is if an athlete, because they have a platform, and they want to be vocal about something they believe in or something that they are very passionate about, I think that they could just use that platform and a lot of them forget that it's not just about the sport. So a lot of people, uh, especially athletes, the majority of them just think, well, all people care about is my sport. So I'm not going to post anything. I'm not going to talk about anything else because I, no one's going to like it if I'm just not talking about my sport. And I don't. I think that that's not the case. It's not about necessarily my beliefs. I just think it's about the idea of if you have an idea or you do believe in something, it's okay to use that platform. And I think more athletes should definitely do that. Yeah, and I think they are doing it. Um, cool, yeah, I mean, I was thinking about interactive things we could do, and, and you know, I was thinking about, you know, something that'd be kind of funny. You know, we're not really gonna do like a kissing booth, so that's not appropriate, but what if we had like a punching booth? Like you could like, you could stand in the punching booth and somebody to come and you just like hit him in the face. It's gonna be a fun thing, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. What could be fun is like, you know how they have those, those arcade machines? Of like whenever you hit and like you can, eat, it generates how much power yeah, yeah, you have. Yeah. Those would be cool. Would that be would be cool. cool. Yeah. And then maybe even before or after, teach someone how to how to punch it because a lot of people I don't. don't know how to punch. Well, a lot of people don't punch them because they don't know how. Yeah. So they're like more intimidated by the idea. Maybe something along those lines of like, well, let me teach you to punch yeah. before in you a punch. Yeah, fun way that's competitive too. Yeah. So they can compete against each other. And then you can generate. Yeah. Yeah. That would be cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I have no boxing background, obviously, but um, but I started watching Kingdom, um, which is the MMA. It's the MMA show on, I think it's on Amazon. I haven't watched it. I'm not an MMA person. Well, I, it's, I mean, yeah, I, and I just, I wasn't either, but my friend, I was in New York a couple, like a month ago, and my friend was like, oh, you need to watch this, it's great. It's got um, one of the Jonas Brothers is in it, and I'm like, what? like a Jonas Brother in it? She's like, what are you talking about? She's like, no, 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 it was like before he was famous and before he only was a singer. It's like from like 2017. Oh, wow. So I watched it. It was pretty interesting. Um, I mean, one of the most interesting things, I think, was like cutting weight right before the fight. Is oh, that yeah. something you'll have to do as well? And how do you yeah. feel about that? And what's the background behind that, you know, I think historically? Um, to be honest with you, I wouldn't know what it is historically. It's just more of whatever your weight is, you try to go about 10 pounds less than that. So whatever I walk around at, I'm a, you cut off 10 pounds and that's what your fight weight is. The majority of people believe in that um, religiously and some people don't, but I would say maybe 2% of fighters don't believe in that. Yeah. Everybody else knows that whatever you walk around at, it's like, what's your weight? 112, okay, what do you walk around at? It's, it's, it's a, a question, it's yeah. a thing. And I think that's really, people tend to cut water or they try to diet their way down. But to be honest with you, the only thing that I know is a solid thing is you go about 10 pounds under what you walk around at. That's crazy. I mean, everybody would like to be 10 pounds under what they walk yeah, at. But, you know, other sports, but this is not, it doesn't sound like it's this fun. Other sports <laughs> do it differently. You know, like wrestlers, I've seen them like literally cut like 20 pounds. I've seen UFC people cut 20 pounds like in two days. Boxers tend to do a little bit. Be easier if you should get people a sliding scale, right? <laughs> Yeah, but you know that's the yeah. way it, it would the be way it a lot is. easier. But then it wouldn't be it wouldn't be so competitive if yeah. you did that. I mean, I guess does that help you get into the mindset of being more competitive as you have to do that? Yeah, right because you're fight? yeah, a hundred percent because you're locking in yeah. and you're sacrificing a lot. It's kind of like, um, you know, fasting basically. Yeah. Uh, to get what you want. So how okay? So tell me like the period before the fight where you'd start it, when you stop, and then obviously when you weigh in, and then how long before the fight is. That? It depends on where your weight is, but for me, what I'll do is about four days out, I'll start to cut my water intake. So I'll make sure I drink about a gallon, a gallon. I'll make sure that I drink about a gallon um, a day. And then closer to the fight, I start to cut down. Okay. And um, when it comes to about four days out, I'm completely drinking no water and my body is losing that whole yeah. gallon. So I tend to drop a lot of weight that way. And then I weigh in and then I have another full day to hydrate and full then we fight. Okay. So it's a day, okay. Yeah, you weigh in the day before. 
cool. I don't think a lot of people try that. Though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get, you get thirsty, but it yeah, works. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, anything else about boxing, about Houston sports life, just that you want to share with people or any, any surprises coming up? I guess um, when's your next fight? I'm fighting for actually a world title. Um, That's a little exciting. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like the, the after the medal, after going to the Olympics and after meddling in the Olympics, it's like the next thing to do yeah. career-wise. So it's a world title fight. It's my first world title fight. There's only four world titles that you can get possible. So it's one of the four. And um, it'll be end of April or beginning of May. They haven't given me a set date, but it's okay. one or the other. And um, yeah, it's going to be basically after that I can die happy. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, hope you don't die. Um, well, die happy. doesn't yeah, matter when. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, um, where's that going to be? Um, they haven't gave us a venue okay. yet uh, because the girl's from Mexico, so she's the world champion. I'm trying to take her belt. So it just depends on the negotiation of where they actually want to fight. Okay. And then are you, are you, is the Olympics something in your future or not? No, point? no. The Olympics okay. is done. Once I already did it. You did it. Okay. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. you go pro. Once you go pro, oh, you, can't, okay. you can't go to the Olympics right. anymore. Okay. Yeah. Um, sure it's it's pretty every, yeah. 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 Cool. Um, it's every sport's different, I guess. Yeah, everybody's yeah, different. Because yeah. uh, a lot of, exactly. <laughs> Some people, uh, when you turn pro, it's no different. For boxing, it's completely different. Okay, so I guess we'll stay one more Olympic thing. Like, what was a good Olympic story that you had? I, I was at the Sydney Olympics um, in Australia in 2000. I, it was the best time of my life. I left school for a month and, and basically was there working and networking and partying. Right. Uh, but I worked at the baseball stadium, so there were some Astros like Roy Oswalt that were, and Adam Everett that were actually on the team um, then. So I, it's just a really cool experience. Which Olympics were you in and then what was your, what was the best experience part of I was that, in other the, than fighting? <laughs> I was in the 2012 um, London Games. Yeah. And I would say it was massive because it was the first time women were allowed in the Olympics for boxing. Oh, wow. So, we had never platformed in the Olympics, and we've never, it was our first, it was our debut. So there was only three women weight classes when originally there's 13. So we had to cut 13 weight classes down to three. It's like basically small, medium, large. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody, it was this huge effort to get in. It was extremely competitive. So given that, at the games, it was packed. Like all the tickets were sold out. Everything was crazy. Um, it was a great Olympics to be in. But that was one of that was like my moment of like oh my god I'm at the Olympics <laughs> because I was I didn't realize or I, it hadn't hit me that I was at the games until I was literally walking into my first fight I was gloved up headgear on I'm walking through this huge tunnel to get to get to the ring and when I walk out it's just this massive stadium yeah. of like a bunch of people like more people well, all the ring logos too up there yeah. See, yeah, yeah well I can see my face on the screen there's like uh, there's cameras there's everything like people there's so many people that they just look like little ants and i was like oh my god is that the biggest in terms of crowd size the biggest fight you were oh yeah a thousand yeah. percent yeah. yeah and i think that's probably majority of anybody probably more than even the best fighters on the yeah. planet have seen because it was the olympics yeah, it was massive yeah. and i looked around and i was like oh my god i'm at the olympics not the best time to realize that you're at the <laughs> yeah, Olympics, right. but that was my moment of like, oh my God, I cool. am here. Awesome. All right. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. No it was problem. great meeting you. It was and, nice um, to you, you know, hopefully get you more involved in the festival as we, as we get closer. Yeah, I would love um, to. Thanks. Uh, festival is June 3rd through 6th in Houston, Texas. Thanks a lot.